Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to discuss how we can convert all the projects to the new Swift 3.0 release and also using the newest version of Xcode. And as you know, Swift isn't completed yet. There are going to be changes in the future. There has been tons of changes in the past. And so we're going to discuss those changes, or at least a few of them today. And I'm going to show you how you can convert all the projects to the new standards. But before we get started, just a few updates on Swift Tutorial Conference. Um, there is a date now. So in the Swift Tutorial Conference, a free online conference, will take place from um, September 21st to September 22nd. It's a free conference. You can just hit the register now button if you go to swifttutorialconference.net. And as you can see now, I also posted the speakers that are going to attend the conference and we're going to have a great program. So stay tuned for that and register for free right now. It's going to be very interesting. And back to our topic of today, talking about the new version of Swift 3.0, we're going to deal with this nice dummy application right here. It doesn't do a lot. Um, so we can move around the Swift icon here. We can change the background color to different uh, colors. Uh, we can activate this green button, which tells us this green is activated and turns back uh, to just green. And we can turn on black white here. And this is also saved using user default so that the next time we launch our application, the state we put this switch in will be recognized. And depending if it's on or off, um, our app turns uh, white or black when we started. So this is just for demo purposes. And we have an, an Xcode project which is running on the current version of Xcode. So let me bring this up. And you can see that there is already one deprecation. And I also put in the uh, changes side to this um, website to um, the Swift code so you can have a look at what the what all of the changes are. And I think the process of changing is really great because none of the changes is simply um, applied to the developers. There is a discussion process and um, this is really great, I think. And as you also can see, uh, the plus plus and minus minus operators for incrementing and decrementing uh, have also been removed. Um, so this is also an interesting change. But let's now have a look at this um, demo project. And as you can see, there's already one deprecation which says that we have to use um, the selector keyword instead of just writing um, our name of a function right here. Um, so this is actually the project. It, it works. And now we will turn it over to the newest version of Swift. So I'm closing this one. Also make sure that my simulator is closed. And then I'm simply going to open that in the Xcode beta version. And let's see what happens. So first of all, um, it tells us that we want to convert to the current Swift syntax. So actually, with the newest version of Xcode, you can also run Swift 2.3 syntax, but we're going to convert it now. So let's do that. There is a nice conversion assistant, so we can choose if we want to use Swift 2.3, or if we want to make changes um, that are necessary to use Swift 3 and the latest SDKs. So let's click Next, and we want to select our old project. And then it's generating a preview for us, and we're going to have a look at that. And we're going to see what actually happens. And there is the app delegate and the view controller.swift file. And you can see all of the changes. The new syntax is on the left hand side, the old syntax is on the right hand side. And I'm going to deactivate the view controller automatic changes so that we can do that together. And as you can already see, there are many changes in app delegated actually um, just inserts an underscore here. And we're going to uh, talk about what that means in a second. But um, if you want to follow along, just also deactivate um, making changes to view controller dot swift since this is what we want to do. I simply hit uh, next and I'm going to continue. And then we have um, uh, another warning here, which says up to, uh, update to recommended settings. So this is also something we should do. So we simply perform the changes and continue. And we're done with that. Um, and then what we want to do is go back to our project 
and the view controller and built the application. And as you can see, there are many errors. So what is the problem? So let's go through the errors one by one. We will keep uh, our warning for the end of this tutorial. So first of all, we need to insert an underscore right here when it says argument names for method view did, uh, view did appear do not match those of overwritten method view did appear. And if we build that again, you see that our error disappeared. And why is that? The way we call functions and methods already changed in Swift 2.0, but it's changing again. And this time it's going to break everything in Swift uh, 2.3, for example, and earlier method names um, did not require a label for their first parameter. So the name of the first parameter was usually built into the method name. Swift 3 makes all labels required unless you specify otherwise. And by inserting this underscore, we specify otherwise. So in practice, this means that in the future, we will move uh, most of the times the last part of a method or function name to the parameter list. But we will see that in practice in just a few moments. But let's now move on to the next error here at user defaults. As I said, our application saves if we want to um, if we want to have a black or white background. So we are using NS user defaults to save those states. And as you can see here, NS user defaults has been renamed to user defaults. So we're going to remove the NS and this has been done for um, all of the older classes. Um, so we now simply delete the NS and we can use user defaults again. And if we have a look at the rest of this call using standard user defaults, this is what we did in the past, it's kind of redundancy because it already says user defaults here. So we do not have to repeat ourselves. And this is a new rule in Swift 3. So we want to remove unnecessarily unnecessary words in our functions and variables. So instead, we will simply use standard and not a method any longer, just a property. So we'll simply use user defaults standard to get the standard user defaults. And in the next line, um, what I told you about the method and function names already applies. I told you that the last part of a function name will be moved to the parameter list. And this is what we have to do here. So if I remove that and simply use bool as it says here, because um, bool does no long bool for key does no longer it's, it exist. It's just bool. And if I call that, um, simply use bool here, then you can see that the for key has been moved to the parameter list. And what we want to do here is look for the key black. So after building, we can see that now our error disappeared. And we will have to discuss the set switch for state in a second. So I will add a comment here. And then we will have a look at the next problem that we have here, which is um, dealing with the animation. And again, the animation with duration name of this function has been changed. So what we will do here is instead of animation with animate with duration, we simply call that animate. And the with duration moves to the parameter list. And if we build that, we will have no error here anymore. And again, here there's a redundancy UI color, black color. So why not leaving out just the black? And all we need to do here is removing the color. And again, here set switch for state. We will add a comment here and deal with that later. But our code looks already better since we no longer have to um, see so many red lines. But if I scroll down a little, there is again some there are again some red lines. And we will continue now. Again, translation in view has been renamed to just translation in in, in the parameter list. And um, let's just correct that right here. And this is this panning on screen is uh, responsible for the drag and drop of the Swift icon. So again, what we want to do is remove the in view to, to just translation and then add the in in the parameter list. So let's build that again and works nicely. So let's continue. What's the problem here? Here we have set translation and instead of CG point zero, this is now unavailable in Swift. We need to use CG point and access zero right here. And then instead of using in view, we will remove 
the view again, redundancy, because we are inserting a view right here. So we have just set translation, the coordinates in a particular view. So we have set switch state, uh, set switch for state right here. This is a function that we ourselves defined. And all it does is it checks if we want to activate or deactivate our switch. And to change that to new standards, what we need to do is remove the for state from the, uh, from the method name and put a label right into our parameter list. And we simply call that label for state. And then we have our parameter state, which is a bool. And then let's also call this function now here where we added the comments. So we said, say set switch for state. Here we have true. And let's do the same here. Set switch for state false. So as you can see, that's no big deal actually. Here we have the same problem as before. We have to change the NS user defaults to just user defaults. And then we use simply standard. Here we have black color again. We remove the, the color. Again, we remove the color right here. We build our application. And then we will resolve this naming issue right here. It's no longer called on, it's now is on. And then let's again have a look at this set bool a function or method. Um, here again, we have to remove the bool and just let's do that one time. So we can see here in the code completion assistance, we have now set a value for key as a description and we set our value, which is true for key black. And we do the same thing here. Simply remove the Bool right here, and then we set it to false. And let's build that application and our errors are gone. So again, here, remove the color. Let's again, remove the color. And we here we have an interesting function, which is pretty long, like a string by appending string. And therefore, um, we simply use now uh, button text. And then we just remove that. We call that appending. And then we have a string, which is in our case, activated. And then instead of for state, we remove the state here because it's a redundancy. And then we could use UI control state dot normal or simply dot normal. And as you can see, now these states are enumerations, the cases um, start with a lowercase letter, um, like in our case now, a lowercase n. And now let's build that. And this works quite nicely. And now um, there are also some changes to Grand Central Dispatch, which are pretty great. So instead of, and let me um, just rewrite that right here. Let's add a comment. So we have a delay time. Um, since we want to retitle our button and when we click it the first time, um, it sets um, its button text and appends um, activated. And after two seconds, we want to reset it to green. And to do that, I'm going to use now the new uh, syntax for Grand Central Dispatch, which is dispatch time in our case. And we use the time now. And then we can add our two seconds. And I'm simply pasting that in right now so that I don't make any mistakes with setting so much um, parentheses. But now we can continue with um, our dispatch block and which is going to look a lot nicer than it used to. So instead of using dispatch underscore after, we use the dispatch queue and the main queue and want, to dis uh, want our code to, dis uh, to, to be dispatched after a time delay, which we have just calculated. And then we don't even need this execute parameter. We can simply add our code right here. So we use our button, set the title, which is going to be green again for the state normal. And there we go. Let's remove that comment. And this should do it. Now here again, we remove the color from the um, function name or from the method name. And then let's build that again. And here we go. We only have one warning 
um, still left here in our code, which we're going to resolve in a second. But before we do that, let's make sure that all of our functions do have the correct signature. Like for example, panning on screen. Since we have not adopted the new way of writing functions, we have to write an underscore here because we haven't specified a label for the first parameter. So let's write that here. Also here for black switch change, we have to do the same thing and the color button pressed same thing right here. So let's build that again. Still no errors and only our one warning left. And as you can see, there is still this deprecation warning because we cannot or should not long, no longer specify our actions that way. Instead, we use the selector keyword, selector, um, no, like this, selector. Then we write our function um, by calling the view controller and we want to um, use the panning on screen function. And that's all there is to it. Let's build that. No warnings, no errors. So we have completely converted our project. Let's run this in the simulator, in the iPhone SE simulator for now. Let's see what it does. And here we go. We can move around our Swift icon. We can set it to green, green activated, turn it back to green, you can activate black, turn it back to white, blue, black, white. Everything works just as expected. And this is the way you can actually convert um, your projects to the new version of Swift. And actually what we now did in about 20 minutes, Swift, the Xcode would have done for you in a matter of seconds. So it's really no big deal to um, convert your projects, but sometimes there are mistakes in the conversion. So it's good for you to know what actually changed. You will know now that you have to watch out for the function names. Um, you have to watch out for renaming issues um, and also like stuff like using selector and so on. And I think you have a pretty good idea now how you can um, convert your old projects and also how to use older tutorial files. So tell me in the comments below if you found this information useful to converting old projects and thanks for watching. I see you next week.